Hi, my name is Sarah and I live in Tennessee. I've lived here for 18 years. I was born and raised in the DC area, so I grew up with government and politics all around me and have had a passion for it for most of my life. I've worked on campaigns and written about politics for as long as I can remember. Uh, I studied government in college and I was a high school government teacher. Anyone who's known me for any length of time knows that I have a passion for the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, our founding principles, and that notion that we are always striving to be a more perfect union. I also have a passion for voting. In the 27 years that I have been eligible to vote, I've only ever missed one election. It was a local election. It still bothers me that I missed that one. I get butterflies every time I get the chance to vote in this country, be it for city council person or for president. And in the times that I have voted for president, I've only ever voted for a Democrat one time, and that was in the last millennium. But this November, I will be voting for a Democrat a second time. I will be voting for Joe Biden for president. And I will be doing so because it breaks my heart every single day that Donald Trump is our president, and for so many reasons. I first thought about doing this video a couple weeks ago, in, and between that time and now, I've come up with more reasons that I'm horrified that he is our president. And for me, it starts with the Constitution. I don't think he has much of a regard for it. I think he could take or leave much of the Bill of Rights, the uh, First Amendment, Fourth, Sixth, Eighth, Tenth. Um, he reads Article 2 and he says it gives him the authority to do whatever he wants, which of course is absolutely not true. Um, he first uh, lost all respect and uh, possibility as a commander in chief for me in 2015 when he was referencing John McCain and said he prefers soldiers who were not captured. I don't see how you can speak of somebody who fought for our country and who spent five years being tortured in enemy prison in such a manner and then asked to be our nation's commander in chief. There's also an issue of policy. I don't trust that he has a working knowledge on many matters, be it uh, environmental policy or foreign policy or health care or education. Um, and I don't think he has much curiosity to learn more about any of these things. There's also the matter of human decency. I can't look at my children and say, I voted for this man. I voted for this man who talks this way, who degrades people, um, who acts like a playground bully because that's the way you get to be in the most powerful office in the world. I just can't do it. In the past few weeks, there have been revelations that he downplayed the virus and he used the excuse that he, it's his job to keep the nation calm when the entire rest of his campaign and his presidency and his recent convention was about scaring the American public, about making us afraid, about terrorizing us, about what would happen if he's not our president to protect us and the burning down of the suburbs. Um, so the, it just rings hollow to me that he has any interest in keeping us calm or unifying us as a country. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, he's encouraged his supporters to vote twice, which is a felony. And that's not a great thing. Um, and I just don't feel like there's a Republican Party anymore. I feel like there's a Trump Party. And that was reinforced by the idea that the Republicans didn't even bother to put out a platform this year. They put out one page statement that said, we love Donald Trump. We support Donald Trump. Please make sure you report in the media how much we love Donald Trump. That's not a party. That's a cult. And so for my children, for my country, for the notion of a free republic, for the Constitution, for human decency, for so many reasons, I will be voting against Donald Trump in November, and I will be voting for Joe Biden.